So hello everyone. Uh, my name is Olivia Shimkuta and a warm welcome to Wemapa's hosted webinar about affiliate-based outsourcing model for regulatory affairs. Uh, so regulatory affairs outsourcing is obviously a very hot topic recently. Only during last three years, uh, overall every outsourcing has grown by 10%, reaching 6.3 billion USD worldwide. <clears throat> That's quite impressive, huh? So why do companies choose to outsource in regulatory affairs? The number one report reason was cost saving. And second most common reason was uh, the need to focus on their core activities. So do what you do the best while outsource the rest. Uh, therefore, I'm very happy to present my colleagues uh, creme de la creme of uh, regulatory affairs outsourcing business two very experienced people in the business, uh, Olga Bernardova and Claudia Gislev. Olga, I hand over to you. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Olga Bernardova, Global Head of Regulatory Affairs, and I'm very happy today to be with you to present you a sense of ABO model um, in the countries. Uh, I'm a professional in regulatory affairs field, working more than 15 years. Last six years, I focus on outsourcing model, uh, sh shaping, implementation, and running off uh, for, uh, let's say, several countries countries and regions. So please, Claudia, now introduce yourself. Hello, good afternoon. Claudia Gislieri here. Nice to meet you. Um, I am a, a regulatory expert. I have uh, 20 years of experience in RA, more or less, uh, and uh, some of most of them are dedicated to uh, consultancy. Um, I also have some experience in uh, uh, QA and uh, I acted uh, for a short period uh, as a qualified person as well. I am currently covering the position of a head of uh, project managers uh, in uh, uh, Biomopas, working together with Olga and uh, uh, providing support mainly uh, in the frame of uh, ABO uh, models. I hand over to you, Olga. Okay, thank you, Claudia. So next slide, please. So here we have the agenda uh, we will go through together today. Uh, first point is challenges and uh, solutions. The next point will be how ABO model works. Then we can go through project scoping and setup. Uh, then we will do the conclusion summary. And then Q&A session will follow up. So please do not hesitate to submit your questions to us. So let's, point, let's uh, address the point challenges and solutions now. So let's now first discuss what are the challenges for local regulatory affairs in pharma companies. First of all, what is very challenging is implementation and improvement, uh, improvement uh, and sharing best practices uh, across the several affiliates, several cultures and uh, several regions. Then the other challenge very common in the pharma companies is generate, collect and evaluate data throughout functions. Then, of course, uh, what is very challenging is to follow up the peak of the workloads and degrees of the workload. And uh, so what is really needed to consider is increase of scalability of the team. Uh, last but not least, indeed, uh, meet, uh, of meeting of demands of involving regulations is also very challenging. And uh, we should not forget that increased business continuity, quality and eff efficiency of services is also quite a challenging point. And we should not forget also that uh, in the pharma companies, uh, uh, the increase of effectiveness uh, could be also evaluated to increase productivity and enhance resources capacity then. What then uh, we can do with these challenges uh, we just mentioned, uh, so uh, as, uh, as uh, we introduced already, we are working on uh, so-called ABO outsourcing solution models, which uh, could address all these challenges uh, with uh, result to increase business stability, 
increase better oversight of the task and the requirement, uh, harmonization of processes, increase of compliance and adherence on the processes. Um, indeed, it could also strengthen oversight uh, from headquarters to affiliates. Uh, we can also improve inspection readiness and improve uh, real results uh, of the inspections from authorities. And indeed, uh, there is an uh, impact on increased sc scalability and easily established new affiliates when the affiliate to, when the regulatory affairs is uh, processes are harmonized across the countries. So advantages of uh, affiliate based outsourcing leads to flexible resources, better business continuity, process harmonization across countries, as we said. And uh, management of a full or partial portfolio products uh, can be also reached uh, with better, let's say, efficiency. Then what uh, can also be, let's say, advantage of affiliate-based outsourcing is reduction of the administrative burden for client and reallocation of the client resources on high value activities, as already Olivia addressed. And then indeed, uh, what uh, could be positively impacted by affiliate outsourcing in forecast, follow-up and control, uh, better management by client, global regulatory affairs. Let's then uh, talk about what really a BO model is and how it works. So generally, a BO model works uh, uh, based on three key principles. And it is the fact that there is a local team of uh, uh, outsourcing company who can simply substitute uh, internal client local regulatory affairs resources, either partially or fully, in, in, those, in the meaning of operations, communication and responsibilities. Indeed, uh, th there is a task management uh, process by this team and all activities involved in the interaction with the stakeholders and national competent authorities can be fully managed by this team. As well, also what could be provided by this team is support for the local affiliates and local client stakeholders. Then all this process uh, is, uh, let's say, covered by strong project management, which provide uh, positive, let's say, um, outcome for the client uh, as there is a single point of contact uh, dedicated for discussion re uh, with regard project setup, oversight, performance review and uh, solving the issue. What is really, really time saving and very convenient for a lot of customers. So um, here we have the visualization when we can see, uh, let's say, pillars of uh, of the collaboration when a client simply is in the center and in uh, let's say uh, uh, in the web of project manager uh, who collaborates with local operations and uh, who also oversight the central services i will go more into details in upcoming slide, uh, slides what uh, who does what so next slide please so then actors of this local outsourcing operational model so we have the local regional expertise uh, and local expert roles, uh, experts uh, which are located in directly in the countries. So uh, local regional expertise and local regional teams mainly op are operational contacts for the client. Our cl clients local representative and our local regional experts uh, qualified to uh, to really highly manage manage uh, uh, client expectations. They are uh, accountable for RR de deliverables and the management of client information systems update. Usually what is required uh, from the clients is update of uh, documentum management systems or regulatory intelligent management systems. Uh, there indeed could be the other systems uh, for artwork management, uh, change control, etc. And what is worth to mention uh, that uh, teams of regional experts working are working across the countries in the territory. So there is really strong uh, business uh, continuity supported with a huge regional expertise. Uh, 
Then let's go to the local experts, which could provide regulatory advice based on local regula regulations expertise. They can provide also very country specific and topic specific re regulatory intelligence and local language support. And also they are responsible for execution of assigned local tasks by global regulatory team. And indeed, they could also act as clients local representative. Central services. Indeed, uh, within this model, there are, there are uh, su such activities which could be also central, centralized and there could be advantage of such a centralization. So also what is usually provided by service providers company is uh, some central services support where we could indeed uh, provide services like medical writing, publishing, document formatting, uh, CMC writing, and uh, indeed uh, central submission management, for example. What could be also provided as a central service which could lead uh, for uh, to degrees of, uh, let's say, expenses and optimization of the, of the cost from the side of the client is, for example, central coordination of linguistic review and uh, review of the artworks for medicinal products. And here we can see interaction, interaction map for a standard uh, affiliate based outsourcing model, where, as already mentioned, uh, there is a main actor is client who directly collaborate on daily operational base with local operational team and uh, dealing with the teams as, let's say, with their own regulatory affairs people. Indeed, uh, there is project manager who is also responsible for oversight uh, of, uh, let's say, this, this team with respect of adherence on the processes and uh, first of all, indeed, responsible for drafting of the processes and um, shaping of the processes. The central services team, uh, as already mentioned, uh, can uh, reflect some headquarters function as uh, chosen by the client to support uh, concrete, uh, concrete tasks like medical writing, publishing, uh, linguistic review. Uh, local team uh, is, uh, is indeed acting as local regulatory affairs internal personnel of the client, so if needed, can directly deal then with health authorities, local affiliates and other third parties based on the request of the client. And indeed, uh, this, uh, this uh, full model needs a strong governance uh, for ensure uh, smooth, uh, smoothness of the processes. So key account governance is ensured, uh, is here to ensure scoping, definition and regular review of the services. Uh, and also mitigation plan and escalation plan and contractual part of the of the, of the collaboration. Then there is uh, project management compliance and operational governance, uh, mainly ensuring audits, CAPATS, process implementations and lesson learned. Standard PM governance is uh, here to, to provide oversight, data evaluation, reporting, metrics and KPI for the client. Then we have operational daily governance uh, over, uh, over operational team, which provides, uh, let's say, assurance about quality of, uh, of the work of the team and uh, sticking on the KPIs uh, by operational team as agreed by the client. And uh, last but not least is here uh, oversight and setup of the processes uh, done by PM, uh, which uh, relates to processes, training, accesses and supporting documentation creation and indeed operational planning based on the forecast provided by the clients. And then what is also very, very beneficial on, uh, on this model is that there is quite a straightforward route uh, for potential escalation route when main contact uh, uh, is first point of contact for reminders. If uh, reminders are not successful, indeed, there is regional lead who can take immediate action and promptly uh, act uh, to, to make corrections and uh, address a client needs. Uh, indeed, if the problem is much higher and it's relevant for setup of the project or 
structural and clarity of the processes. For example, there is pro project manager who could be addressed and uh, make relevant uh, corrective actions. And uh, the third point for uh, for escalation is indeed the head of, of the functions um, who can uh, really make, uh, make the changes if needed. And uh, then I'm hand overing uh, the presentation to my colleague Claudia for project scoping and setup. Thanks, Olga. So uh, now that we have seen actors and governance pillars uh, and how they work together, um, let's have a deep dive into the uh, model implementation steps. So uh, the implementation process consists of five main uh, stages uh, can, that can be more or less long in terms of time, uh, depending on the specific situation. So depending on the client, uh, countries involved, uh, projects and portfolio. And uh, those uh, uh, steps are uh, uh, summarized here. They consist in scoping, preparation, pilot transfer and steady state. And we will see the details of uh, each stage uh, in uh, the next slides. So let's start with scoping. This is uh, the first step. It is a very essential one. Um, to, to, first of all, to start with uh, scoping, we have uh, um, to um, look into the client needs and uh, actual situation. So this has to be a very detailed um, analysis of the structure, organization, uh, market footprint, for example, of the client. Um, this is the starting point in order to be able to agree on the scope. That's to say, make it clear what we want to achieve and uh, uh, what uh, uh, the relevant cost would be and uh, where they are located. Uh, also, uh, when uh, and how we want uh, these uh, um, details uh, to be uh, implemented. And also in this phase, uh, we shall not forget discussion on risks and the relevant mitigation measures that would uh, allow us to ensure business continuity. Um, additionally, in this step, we identify the tools that will be used for uh, uh, the, the setup, uh, as well as tools needed for execution of activities and also for evaluation and calculation of relevant results. Uh, it can look as a kind of uh, not strictly necessary step, uh, but it is most probably uh, the most important one because these steps allows us to have a clear picture and clear plan of what we want to achieve. And uh, it also allows us to uh, have backups, uh, details uh, and plans in place. After this scoping step, we uh, can move to the remaining uh, implementation steps, starting with the preparation. On Bayamapa side, uh, well, after the, the setup and uh, before actually starting the work, we have to put in place uh, infrastructure uh, processes and procedures to allow us uh, managing the project in a harmonized and consolidated and reproducible way. Um, also, we have to identify and set up trainings uh, to support the mentioned processes uh, that shall be actually performed at this stage. Um, in fact, um, it would be kind of risky and not effective uh, process uh, to work with uh, different uh, approaches or processes, um, you know, or a random um, way of working and set up across the countries and regions, not to mention that results uh, would not be comparable and relevant evaluation would not be very accurate. This step also makes sure that tools and systems are in place to allow collecting data and tracking them in an accurate way. This step is equally important on client side. In fact, during the preparation step, the client shall focus 
on making employees third parties and stakeholders aware of what's going on and what their plans are, what will change and how. Internal communication is very important. It has to be clear, fair and effective. And uh, it has to be shared in advance to ensure smooth setup and handover. So unclear and insufficient communication could trigger frustration and uncertainty that could, at the end of the day, jeopardize the whole process. Once everything is in place, the suggested process is to start with a pilot phase. That's to say, uh, start working on a limited number of uh, countries or products or processes to make sure that uh, what we planned uh, works how we planned it to work. Uh, Generally speaking, the pilot step consists in testing the process on all the products within one country that would be chosen, generally speaking, by the client upon internal strategic discussion and decision. Uh, it can be, for example, the most critical one or the less critical one, the one with the resources uh, um, issues or the one with high impact on the market. But as said, the processes can be um, really uh, totally customized depending on the needs. So uh, this step uh, shall be adapted accordingly. Also, this step is fundamental in order to promptly identify any concerns or issues with the project, allowing us to manage them in a restricted environment, thus limiting the potential issues. And uh, it allows us to collect data applicable not only to the specific country, but to the whole project that would then be um, uh, uh, useful to uh, support uh, the whole process and start with a stronger uh, basis. And once the pilot step is complete, it can be transferred to the remaining countries or processes or uh, products. Uh, generally speaking, transfer is organized in waves that are agreed, again, in the scoping step. Um, this is to make sure that uh, both uh, uh, the provider and the client uh, uh, feel, comfort feel comfortable with the rollout, uh, um, to roll out too many countries at the same time uh, could be um, uh, tricky. Uh, and just to work with this transfer step in waves uh, helps uh, reducing the potential for errors. Also, uh, it allows all the teams to become familiar with the new setup. We have to remember that we work mainly with array, but processes potentially impact other departments as well. So those departments that are not, uh, you know, directly or deeply impacted by the process really need some time to acknowledge the change and get used to it as well. And last, the steady state. So all countries in this uh, state uh, have been rolled out. Uh, same processes and same controls apply to all uh, the countries. Now, all data collected uh, should be really reflecting how the project works and uh, the process uh, would need to be reviewed less frequently. Generally speaking, we could think of uh, reviewing uh, on a yearly basis. And uh, if uh, we move to the next uh, slide, we can also see um, what are the tools uh, that allow us uh, to uh, evaluate at each step how the project works. So uh, how we collect the data and how we evaluate them. This tool is mainly reporting. So depending on the agreement, uh, on the project, on the client needs, reporting can focus on volumes, for example, uh, or on matrix and KPIs, or also on uh, trend analysis, on performance audit at CAPAS, or on all of the above. Uh, let me also stress the fact that KPIs apply to the pilot and rollout steps as well. So 
it facilitates adjustment of specific processes, if needed, before the steady state takes place. And details on reporting, of course, uh, are customized at time of scoping, as everything else. In the next slide, we can see some examples of KPIs. This is just to provide you with a very high level overview of what a KPI can be. Uh, these are the most frequent KPIs that we usually uh, see uh, applied. Um, and again, uh, all these KPIs and matrix are discussed at time of scoping and can be adjusted or integrated uh, throughout the, the, the project life cycle uh, upon need. Um, again, uh, there is no right or wrong way to set up KPIs and to approach the process. It really depends on the needs, on the client uh, situation and uh, on the um, ideal uh, um, uh, way of uh, uh, achieving uh, uh, the, the, the results. And uh, as anticipated in one slide above, uh, reporting and evaluation of data are uh, used not only to check how many variations, for example, were submitted in a month uh, or uh, how many approvals we received. Uh, the importance of uh, collecting data uh, is really linked to the possibility of uh, uh, evaluate and verify uh, how the process works, uh, if it works fine or if there is uh, any room for improvement. Um, this is the added value of uh, uh, ABO. So it provides an overview on the whole process so we better understand how the sub-processes work and how uh, the sub-processes and thus the whole procedure can be improved. So it helps to see ahead, not only from an operational point of view, but also from a compliance point of view. For example, we can uh, take action on the process uh, in order to improve the process itself, but also in order to reduce the number of kappas or to reduce the number of uh, findings or the criticality of findings uh, during internal audits or uh, during uh, health authority inspections. And then, so at the end of this uh, presentation, uh, so after showing you teams and uh, governance and process organization, we can uh, uh, kind of step back to the benefits associated to ABO as anticipated by Olga, as I think that now it can be kind of uh, easier to uh, see uh, how um, added value um, can be uh, provided and uh, what it is associated to. So for example, resources, they are optimized by uh, using local expertise, uh, but also uh, sharing these local expertise and resources across regions with common understanding of the common process. Uh, processes, so uh, as per setup, processes are the same across regions, and countries, and uh, um, they are uh, set up and evaluated and reviewed uh, at the same time, uh, ensuring consistency. Uh, and uh, um, once uh, uh, we have agreed one setup, one implementation, one review process of the countries, uh, it is uh, uh, easier to understand the reducing of costs. So teams working together to optimize support and backup easily in case of need. Onboarding is performed to the same process, to the same uh, systems, uh, attending uh, uh, same trainings and accessing same tools. So all these contribute to reduce costs. And uh, it is uh, responsibility of uh, uh, project management, that's strong project management, performed uh, 
by people with array knowledge uh, that uh, supports uh, all these uh, uh, detailed uh, uh, setup and evaluation. Also, both parties co collaborate as a unique company. So, Bayomapas takes over some tasks and works in strict connection with the client. Data are shared, as well as lessons learned. Uh, they are used to improve a process that is reviewed and agreed together. And last but not least, KPIs, uh, as I said, are agreed with the client, adjusted if and where needed, and used to review the process. The, the project, the performance, and to move ahead towards a better compliance and towards a optimization of uh, resources and uh, uh, processes as well. And I would say that's all from my side. I think that maybe we can move to the Q&A session, provided there are questions. Thank you very much, Claudia. And now I invite everyone, whoever has any questions, to use the question box and uh, write a question over there. So we'll uh, give you time to write any questions. Also, I see one hand raised. So if you could uh, write uh, write it down in the question box. Yeah, so I suppose if, if no more questions, then uh, I would like to thank everyone for participation. Uh, afterwards, we will send you the link with the recording of this webinar. And um, in general, do not hesitate to contact us for any questions or a consultation, uh, bd at wemapas.com. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you so much.